So I am excited if you're watching this video because this is the second video of training for the stewards and ushers. This means you've watched the first one. It means that you are ready to serve, you are ready to grow, you're ready to empower other people and that you realize that you are an ambassador of Christ. So we are going to start with the role of the steward today. And we see in the New Testament, right in the beginning of the church, taking up tithes and offering were part of the worship services. So there are three duties that I would like the stewards to fulfill within our church services. First of all, it's always taking up of the tithes and the offerings. Secondly, the serving of the communion. And thirdly, is the handing out of any pamphlets or anything that pastor decide from the pulpit that needs to be handed out. You stand up immediately, you go take it from her and you hand it out. So when we look at the taking up of the tithes and the offerings, the moment pastor says we are going to take the tithes and the offerings, you don't wait for an invita invitation, you don't wait for pastor to call your name, you immediately stand up and with a joy in your walk, come to the front, stand in the allocated aisle that you have been located to and having your bucket or your plate in your hand and you look to the audience. And then pastor will empower them in regards with giving. And once she said a prayer, prayer and she said amen, then immediately you go to the aisle or the pew that's allocated in your aisle, the first pew. You give the plate to the person, they hand it over from one person to the next to the next. And a steward is ready at the end of that pew to take that plate and to give it to the next person in the next pew. And so you continue to take up all the tithes and offerings until everybody is at the back of the church. And once you are done, you give it to the head steward or the two people on duty that is going to count the money for that day. So there must always be two or three people counting the money, never just one and then signing it in the receipt book. And by then, the other usher should have given the head steward the visitor's cards already so that he can hand it in with the treasurer uh, when he gives the money to the treasurer or put it with the money in the safe, whatever the arrangements will be. So this always stays the same unless pastor comes and decides we're doing it differently. And this is what we've done in the pandemic that we had to, according to regulations, take it up in a holder in front of the church. So if the holder is in front of the church, when pastor says you're going to take up the tithes and offering, please, ashes, get up immediately, come and stand in the front, look at the, the congregation, and then pastor is going to pray. And once she says, amen, stand a bit back, give the people space to hand in the money. And the moment the last person handed in the money, then you take that, uh, that holder's, Take it to the steward's office, ready to count the money. So should uh, the money, the, the tithes or the offering be taken up in the beginning of the service, you should go take it to the steward's office and put it in the safe to count it after the service. But mostly we take up the tithes and offering after the service and then you can immediately go and count it. So the same goes for taking up the, or serving the communion. The moment that pastor says we're going to have communion, once again, you don't wait for an invitation, you don't wait for it to finish talking, you immediately get up, go stand at the table and look at the audience. And then once pastor has empowered the audience in regards with the communion, she will hand out the bread and every steward take the bread to their designated aisles, they hand them out, they serve all the people, remember to serve if there's any worship team members on the platform to serve them, to serve people doing the sounds or, or a lady can go serve a mother in the mother's room if she's there. And then once everybody has served everyone, you wait at the back of the pew until every steward is done and every steward together walk them to the front to come and get the cups for the juice, the bread juice, which represents the wine. And then once again, pastor will hand it out to you. You will go and walk and serve the people in the pews. Once you're done, you wait at the back for all stewards to be finished. Once they are done, they come to the front and then pastor will serve the stewards and the head steward will serve the pastor. So this is how it is being done. And once again, if people need to come to the table and we're not going out to serve them, then once again, when I say we're going to have our communion, you immediately get up and you come and stand at the tables that has been set out, not to close so that people feel uncomfortable, but just close uh, enough 
uh, and far enough that they don't even actually see it, just to make sure that everything works out in order and if anyone needs assistance to help them because this is what we are here to do we're here to serve the people so when we look at the responsibilities then of the kitchen ashes and i'm quickly moving to that we see in the morning at eight o'clock already these uh, ashes arrive at church and they fill up the urn they switch it on they come and they make sure that all the tables in the fellowship hall is neat all the the um the tablecloths are, are clean if there are any dirty ones put it in the washing bin in the kitchen and put a clean one on we clean all the the facilities during the week but you can just go and make sure still everything is clean and tidy fill up the coffee the sugar the tea when necessary you know the milk get it ready for service and now you put out small plates for the rusk or the cookies or whatever we hand out make sure the green crates are ready where people can put in the uh, their dirty dishes make sure the whole fellowship all is tidy and clean and then make sure that the urn is set on the lowest temperature the 15 minutes before you then go to church because remember 15 minutes before the service starts everyone is finished with the preparations and we go to church so that we can greet the people and then also make sure you close all the doors make sure the safety doors are closed make sure that there is none inside and i also just want to bring in here after sunday school please sunday school teachers once you're done with your class make sure that you evacuate your class with all your children take them to the outside and once they are out close the door so that we have no children wandering alone in the buildings uh, we want our children to be safe so please and then at the outside there will be an usher after service making sure that our children are safe so uh, once the people after the service comes in to serve coffee and tea please stand close to the table uh, where the urn is and where the coffee and tea is to make sure that these people are all right if anyone spills just assist them if anyone struggles especially with the urn or anything assist them if you see the milk is finished please go get new milk and then make sure that all the dirty dishes is then in the crate and take that to the kitchen once the people are done with their fellowshipping and so like i said assist anyone and keep the kitchen door closed so that people unnecessary people don't go into the kitchen and once everything and everyone is done please put the milk back in the fridge switch off the urn remove it from the plaque make sure that there are no dirty dishes standing around everything's on the green crates and then the tablecloths that are dirty you can put them in the washing bin but if you're able to wash it at your home and iron it i will really appreciate it and you can use decreaser that we find at our shops here to decrease all the marks it really works and it takes off all the oily marks and you can wash it at your house and make sure to bring it back again next sunday so please check on a regular basis as you use the cupboards that are always clean and tidy so in the kitchen no one is allowed in the kitchen except the team on duty and on communion sunday make sure that the communion table as well is set before quarter to nine also clear the communion table afterwards so maybe one of the kitchen ashes can go inside and make sure that everyone is okay in the fellowship hall while the other one quickly then clear the table take it to the kitchen the next day our cleaner will wash everything so take the items to the kitchen and everything that needs to go into the washing bin put them in there and then we go and look at the ladies and men's uh, toilets so like i said we do clean during the week but once again just go in the morning make sure that excessive dust is removed make sure there's enough toilet paper enough uh, sanitizers or, or, or things to wash their hands with soap put in new clean towels but now with the pandemic we use the paper towels on the outside make sure the small carpets are clean sweep it because sometimes there comes in all the leaves and things from the wind that is blowing so please just sweep and make it look clean and while you do that also make sure that there's no rubbish no paper and things lying on the outside if you see it pick it up teach the children to pick it up so once again when you go home then make sure the early switch off it's plugged out close all the windows make sure all the tabs are closed because sometimes our children struggle to really close it and then the water keeps on dripping also please make sure that all the toilets are flushed before you go home and close all the doors close the safety doors and we will teach you where to close and when to lock and how to lock 
and also um, take note if you can take the, the um, towels to the house to wash it you can do that if you can't you can put it in the uh, uh, washing bin in the kitchen but if you can do that then remember to bring it back on time next Sunday and then as far as the kids and the youth is concerned we are really going to make them part of the adult uh, usher team in the kitchen so that they can learn and be able to do everything that you are doing but please assist them um, make sure they have to take out the cookies and the rust and everything to put it out they have to prepare the cold drink there's no glasses with cold drink standing in the fridge because that can break and be done or a crack and we don't want that and no children are allowed to help themselves in any of the drinks on the fellowship hall. In the fellowship hall, it is only the adults. The kids and the youth are being helped at the kitchen table, serving table, where we are helping them. And even when the milk or anything is finished, the children don't go in the fellowship hall and just help themselves. They confront and they go to an usher, a kitchen usher, an adult, and they ask them to assist them. And then once again, you can ask the Sunday school superintendent that's head of that in regards with any help that you need for the kitchen preparation. So please help us to supervise the kids and they will be helping you. So when we are running out of stock, please don't tell the pastor on a Sunday what you need because I will forget. But please, the next day you can send a WhatsApp. And this is the, the um, head usher's responsibility to make sure then that we have received the notification so that we can purchase what we need in the coffee, the tea, whatever it is good so this is the duties and this was point number five to share with you the responsibilities and the duties so when you are being trained you will not just watch the video but you will sit in with your head usher or head steward and they will train you thoroughly while you are in service but number six I want to bring to you be welcoming and friendly don't just say hello to people come and say good morning it is good to see you good morning welcome it is so good to have you with us and there are a few things that are important. You don't stand with your cell phone and, uh, and don't see the people coming in. Secondly, you are not greeting and talking so much to somebody that you don't see somebody else come in, that there's no place for them come in. Um, and you just really, you are friendly. And I will see if I can add, if there's time at the end of the video, a, a few um, examples of what not to do. So we really need to make people feel at home, comfortable and connected. There's no kissing and hugs and especially not with strangers and now with the pandemic we must give an elbow greet but please we are not over friendly but yet we are an over familiar but we show respect and we are truly a genuine welcome so you have a genuine smile and please have eye contact with the people so Point number eight, be helpful. This is your spiritual home and you have to take initiative, you have to take responsibility. Please volunteer to assist during other events that we have. Wherever you are in the property, once again, please see that everything is in order. And when you see there is something out of place or when you are suspicious, please make a noise, especially for our people's safety. And please volunteer to assist when one of your team members cannot make it. And if you are uncertain of anything, please don't hesitate to ask. We are here to help you. We're here to help you grow and learn. We are here to do this together. And once again, I want to bring your attention to the fact that normally women ministers women, men ministers women. So therefore, if you find a lady that wants to know where the restroom is, it's good that a woman shows her, or men, it's good that a man shows her where the restroom is. And then if there are any issues, please relay them to your head usher or head steward and they will once again discuss it with me. But what is very important and what I really want to bring your attention to is that if our auditorium is a basil of activity before the services begin it will add to a relaxed and energetic atmosphere and it will break any spirit of religion and therefore i want to encourage you whether you're on or off duty be at church 15 minutes before the service start and start talking to them, making conversation, nothing personal uh, and, and, and intimate, or just really getting to know them. How are they? Who are they? Are they who, where do they come from? Where is their family? And really just making good conversation with the people that has been in the church for a long time and for those that are newcomers alike. Now, I thank you for being part of this training. And also remember to have your card on when you're on service, on duty. 
but I thank you for for listening to this training and once you have watched this video you will go over to your head steward or usher or even with me and we will complete this training with personal conversation and personal challenges with questions and answers and we will train you in service so I'm so excited because I know you are going to grow and I know God is going to do great things through you empowering people a chance that you have people you might have never seen that come into this church and sharing the love of Christ with them, giving them an opportunity that the love of God can change their life. Thank you for serving. We really appreciate you. What are you doing here? And my kids couldn't do anything. They couldn't find their shoes. They couldn't find their coats. It took all morning. I'm lucky I even made it to church. Oh! What's up, buddy? Hey, hey, How are you doing, man? We haven't seen you in forever. It's good it's to see you. That was awesome. Did you see the game the other night? I did. We're so close, but I mean, it just, it just it just broke my heart that they lost. It had to kill you. You had to be it's up crazy, all night. Crazy, but I think you're Welcome to Bethel. Who are you? Are you new? I've never seen you before. Hey, how you doing? Are you new here? I've never seen you before. You look different. Um, are you new? I'm the pastor. <laughs> 